Gabriel fam, it's Natasha Alford here, live in Las Vegas with the one and only D.L. Hughley, hey now. an original king of comedy. Absolutely. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. I'm, wonderful. I'm, with, I'm with my brothers, I'm on stage doing what I love, so it's, and, and I'm in Vegas. Only thing is my wife's here, so there ain't going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> There's <laughs> only so much you can yeah, do. Yeah, right. I have no idea who that is. No, so you were actually just professing your love on stage for your wife, yeah. your family. Right. You, you had a great set out there. Thank you. How does it feel to be doing what you love in the game for as long as you've been Well, I think that, that the great thing about what I do is if you do it right, you get to yes. do it again. I think that this is a, a gig that doesn't have a particular destination. I, like, I'm, I'm just out for a drive, and I don't have anywhere to go, and I think... I love what I do, and I love that the stakes are so high, and I love that that uh, people now um, now sometimes can't afford a vacation, so they come to a comedy show or a movie to kind of escape. Now your bills gonna still be there when you get back, mm. but at least you can laugh for a couple hours. Yeah, people were really enjoying the show out there. Some of the things that you've been talking about uh -huh. um, are really important, though. So we're very close to election sure. on Tuesday. Sure. How do you feel as somebody who's been keeping up with everything? Well, I, I feel. Primarily, a sense of shame. Mm. I think that, uh, like, I have never really understood. Uh, I think that whether you like uh, the candidates or not, there seems to be this effort to make them the same thing. Mm. Like, there's a moral equivalence. I think one is qualified, one isn't. You could have a different ideological vantage point for somebody else, but at a certain level, it, it pains me that someone who is so overly qualified is running against someone who is underqualified. And that it's still this close. Mm -hmm. I think that it, it really hurts me for women. I had never really understood how hard it was. Because I think that the, the, the biggest thing in this, it have to, can you imagine another time where, where a man would trot out somebody else's dalliances? Like when he brought those women to the, that her husband mm -hmm. fucked around with to a, to a debate. Mm -hmm. That wasn't political. That was basically you telling a woman she needs a co sign. It was personal. It was, very it was personal. And, and, and to me, when you can keep your your head when everybody's losing theirs, that to me is a testament of somebody who's being a leader. Now, I will admit to being a chauvinist, but I'm certainly not a misogynist. I believe mm -hmm. that a woman should go as far as her abilities take her. But, I mean, you could you could run the free world, you could win the war on terrorists, but this casserole ain't going to warm itself up. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't. These are just jokes. He's just no, 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 I re I, no. I really feel like at a certain at a certain place, mm -hmm. you have to feel as if somebody, uh, to me, uh, uh, somebody serving you or, 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 or asking if you are right is the ultimate symbol of love. Right, and that goes both ways. It does. Right. That like, goes both ways. I'll die. Men die six to seven years before women do. Mm -hmm. That's because we have a lot more fun. But I'm not talking <laughs> about that. But I just I think that if you do it right. Your ultimate job, I think to me, if you're a man and you don't protect your woman or your children or make life better for them, then I don't know what you're here for. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's not wrong for you to ask me, ask, it's not wrong for me to ask you to warm me up again. So it shouldn't be in the front of your feminine. So we're jumping around on topics sure. here. Grill fam, if you're tuning in, feel free to send questions to DL. We're here live in Las Vegas for Soul Train Awards weekend. So you talked about being married for a long time. Sure. How do you make love last that long? I think you got to fall in love over, over and over again. Again, I, and ultimately, I think that men, we love the woman we love, but women settle for us. Like it's uh, like I'm I'm fully aware that there is another dude she really wanted to be with, but I was a dude. And I think it's just it's like she'll always say, "I could have been." Well, I don't care. I, I know I'm a consolation prize. It don't bother me. Uh -huh. I still here. I'm still here. Uh -huh. I don't care how I get in the game. I'm here. So fall in love over and over again. Over and over That's again. How you make it last. Ultimately, you, I think that you can't. You, you, you rediscover things because to me, um, um, there are things, I think that you get older and things move and say, but if you really have, uh, there are times when you see a woman with your eyes and some, sometimes you see it with your soul. And I think that it's the times you see it with your soul that sustain you, but it's the time you see it with your eyes that go, shit, I'm doing all right. Yeah, you're not doing too bad. Yeah, right. So you're going to hold up nice. What's it like being a father in this age, raising mm -hmm. sons in particular? in this era of Black Lives Matter, right. where we're talking about accountability and community uh, policing and just, you know, the threat to the black body. Well, I, I, I would, see to me, if the word accountability were spread equally, then it would be okay. How come is, is when you're talking about the black community, there should be a level of accountability, but you, when you equally say the same thing about a police department or a justice department, that word 
perceived to have a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. If I do something wrong, mm -hmm. you, if you do something wrong, you should right. too. Mm -hmm. How is it that when you watch a videotape that's used to convict the suspect, the videotape says everything you need, but if you use that videotape in the investigation of a police officer doing something, we don't know what happened before. We don't know what frame of mind he was in. So one gets a presumption of innocence, and one gets a presumption of guilt. Mm -hmm. And I think that ultimately, if we're going to live in society, we have to see things through the same eyes. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh, you had a, a really a viral appearance on the Megyn Kelly show sure. where you were talking about the death sure. of Philando Castillo. Sure. What do you think it is in terms of this country being so divided that some people see things one way and well, other people see it the opposite? All of us Where are, do we get that All argument? of us are some total of our life's experiences. Okay. All you are is, is the way you've seen things, the things you've experienced, and the way you process those things. Um, to me, I think that the most fair thing is, is to be objective. Mm -hmm. Listen. I firmly believe that unfortunately some people have to be dealt with in a violent way. But you can't use violence for every situation. I think that we live in a country where it takes six months to be a police officer and nine months to be a beautician. Mm. So when a curling iron is more dangerous than the Beretta, then I'll, then I'll agree with that. But I think we are a, a society that now the things, there, there are things that don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Like the box camera doesn't exist anymore. You know, the, the catalog, the Sears and Robot catalog doesn't exist anymore because the, the idea of what policing looks like doesn't exist anymore. We have so much more information than we did before. So we have to evolve, and if we're not evolving, the idea that you could just say, like what happened in Oklahoma, that you could just say, I was afraid to take somebody's life, that doesn't, that's not gonna wash anymore because now we see. Like the most, the worst thing that happened to some people is to, to police departments is the Miranda Rice and cameras. Mm -hmm. well, you can't tell us what we didn't see. I think that we, the argument is, is insane to me because I always hear people say that, well, poli all police officers are, aren't bad. Well, everybody that police shoot aren't bad either. Mm -hmm. if, if there's a one, there's another. We can have a justice department. Um, to me, if we get uh, body cameras, but don't get bias-proof grand jury, then we, we've not accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. All we are is human beings. If it's right for you or wrong for you, it's, 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 it's the same. If you see something, say something. It just shouldn't be for the general public. It should be for everybody. Mm -hmm. It should be, if you see something, say something, it shouldn't just be, if I want my communities better, they say you have to be a participant. Well, if you want your police departments better, you have to be a participant. If, in 2006, the Justice Department came out and said that, that uh, police departments across the nation were right with white supremacists. Now, I didn't say that. They said that. Why is it that when we have conversations about policing, we never mention that element? It's always what we can do. At a certain point, you have to face the fact that some people are in a position to lord over people's lives and have life and death in their hands and have ulterior motives. And, and if that's not well step, then we can't have a fair conversation. That's real. D.L. Hughley, comedy is a way to talk about the truth, sure. but also challenge people to be better. Sure. Right? I don't know that I, I challenge it. What Here, do you think? Here's the thing. I think that my ultimate goal is, is I understand my job. I'm, when I'm on the like I'm here to sell potato chips and tennis shoes. I get it. <laughs> I get what my gig is. But but to me ultimately, comedy for me is about people seeing themselves. Mm -hmm. You know how people lose weight or make changes? They see themselves in the mirror. You watch yourself on the scale. You have to see yourself. And if you see yourself and you like what you see, you'll keep doing it. If you don't, you won't. So it's kinda like you hold up a mirror. Sure. To so the that's world. all comedy is to me. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to be out with you know, your brothers in comedy on the stage. And it, uh, I'm gonna ask our producer to come in a little bit closer. I wanna, cause you just had like a, a deep thought just there. If you have to go to war and uh, there must be uh, situations that, that are turbulent and are trying, it is uh, a blessing to go to war or, or to have an endeavor with people you love and respect. Mm -hmm. I've never been afraid to have conflict, but it's always been nice to have conflict and turmoil and happiness with groups of men that you respect and love. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think it's the same. You, you'll see people that have gone to war, and they'll always, it's a band of brothers in terms of war. It's a band of brothers in terms of this. We have an obligation to take the things that we have been blessed with and to show people the things that we've seen. You, you, you to me, um, we get to see the stars because a telescope exists that extends our view further than it ever would have gone before. 
we have that obligation to be that telescope to people, to show them it's a different way, mm-hmm. to show them that things that you don't see before. Mm-hmm. And, and and I've never seen uh, men that I was more distinctly proud of than they did to be with. Yeah. How do you keep on laughing even as the world, you know, gets crazy? Mama, Where do you find it? You know what's funny? Our parents used to live longer than us. Mm-hmm. Um, they lived longer than us, and they lived... They smoked, they drank, they ate shitty food, they did, but they laughed. Yeah. Like, remember the, the bill collector would call, your mom would say, hey, you know what? You can't get blood from a rock. Mm-hmm. They had an idea that was rooted in who they were and what that meant, and that they, were all, they could only do what they're capable of. I, I've never once prayed to God that he would deliver me victory. What I've always prayed for is that he'd give me the strength to make a good accounting of myself. People want a predestined result. I just want the best I got that day. Mm. That's real. We're, we're so grateful for everything that you do, the conversations that you start, and the fact that you've kept us laughing for so long. Well, I, you know, I, I'm, 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 in a, I'm grateful to be in a position where the things I say I mean, and I, I am comfortable with the idea that that may cost me something. I'm, I'm comfortable with the idea that people may not may have an adverse reaction to it. I I I feel as if we live in a time like when I, I watched the Lil Wayne interview. Now I, I respect anybody's right to see the world the way they do, but you do understand that for equal every every reaction, every word you utter, when you have that many lives and minds in your hands, there is a responsibility to be clear. Not to say it like I would say it or you would say it, but to be clear. To mean what you say. You'll never see me retract what I said if I meant it. Mm-hmm. If I meant it and you don't like it, I get it. Mm-hmm. I, so, but, so to me, I don't care if it's wrong to me or right to me. I care that it's clear. I respect your right to have your opinion. Make sure you mean it. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to apologize when you're drawing your knife out of it. That's real. That's real. You can't unbreak a glass and you can't take back words that you said. So mean it. Well, speaking of responsibility for all the Griot fam that's watching, Tuesday, Election Day, right. what are your words to those who are thinking about staying home? Well, I think that, that, that you have, listen, go, stay, you're voting. Whether you go, whether you don't go, whether you go, you, you're making a decision. And it is being weighed for you or against you. Now, to me, I'd rather fight on my feet than my knees. And ultimately, they'll have to, people have to make this decision. You'll never hear me tell people what they should do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tomorrow, I'll leave here and fly back to Los Angeles just to vote. You heard that. Just to vote. Now, I'm not telling you what you do. I'm That's what he's you, doing. I'll fly back. And I can tell you this. I am proud. I'm not one of those cats who is voting for Hillary. I'm a very well-informed dude. I'm not one of them cats who's voting for Hillary by default. I'm voting for her because I, I'm proud to vote. I'm proud to vote for her. I'm proud to see that woman that competent. I am proud that we live in a society where we have seen a black man be elected and a, and a woman who is this competent be elected. I'm proud to do it. And I'll, I'll pull my lever and then I'll go back to my job. But I am going home specifically to vote. So I can vote in California then I gotta fly to New York the next day. And I, and I, and, and I think that ultimately you cannot Underscore the fact you can't, uh, you can't uh, you know press the fact enough that you are making a decision whether it's an active one or benign. You're saying yes or no. All right. So it's wisdom from D.L. Hughley. What's drunk with? <laughs> but they say the truth comes out when you've been drinking. The truth come out a lot. Of <laughs> Congratulations Thank on all the so success. Much. Thank you so, so much. So great to meet and you. I, and, I, and I love it. You know what I love about the real? It's the first. It's as close to Reuters or a national situation that I've ever seen before. I think that you all are fair. And I think uh, uh, Joy, uh, I, I, with, with Joy and Tamron, I think that I've watched black women be the clearest, most salient voices in this pol- turbulent political society. And I think the, uh, among the real, I think I'm, I'm just uh, black women are swimming and winning gold medals and are navigating a turbulent political climate and winning one too. And I'm very proud of you. Well, we appreciate I mean, I think you. y'all talk a lot, but I think I'm very proud of you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll take one question before we wrap up. 
to our producer from the Griot fam. So somebody asked if there's going to be an original Kings of Comedy biopic. Well, they well, we're, we're going to do, uh, on the 14th, we'll be on the Steve show. Steve uh, show. Where we have a reunion, and, and there's the prize given to Bernie. And, you know, I, I don't I don't know if, if there'll be anything. I think, I don't know if there'll be enough interest. Uh, I think that it was, that was a moment of time I'm grateful to have had. But I think the great thing about that situation is when you're moving, you look back at things that have happened and you're not necessarily, uh, you don't have to go back in time, you just appreciate where they were. Mm -hmm. That 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 did uh, things to me that I'll never have to have replicated again. I'm grateful to have had it. I don't ask to keep doing it again. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that it happened. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. people die early and people don't finish things. I, I, in a moment of time, we wrote our name in the stars and nobody can take it away from us. So w if that replicates itself again, that would be a miracle. If it doesn't, I already had one. You can always look back on that miracle. Right, right. Yeah. You can always do that. So uh, it's, there's always a mo it's, it's, it's a moment in time that, that is, is, is clearly defined, and I'm so grateful to have had it. Well, we're grateful for your time today. Thanks so much, Grill Fam, for tuning in. Make sure you check out DL Hughley. Where can they find you on Twitter and Instagram? Well, at Real DL Hughley uh, and uh, on both. And then we do our, our, our DL Hughley radio show every day from 3 to 7 across the country. So um, I'm, I'm having a great time. All right, great. <laughs> Go ahead. How about the app? Oh, oh yeah, I have a deal. You got a deal, Hughley app. Oh, no big deal. Well, He's got an app going on, yeah, you know. Right. He's Look got it. a lot going the on. The oldest, he don't know how to get on the app, but he knows how to say his name. <laughs> yeah. Always get you an old dude. <laughs> just, just the whole thing's down. <laughs> He don't right. remember his name. He can't spell <laughs> <show> out. <laughs> Thanks so much, Grill Fam. We'll see you soon. Thank you.